Hi everybody, it's Agnes and for this YouTube I really wanted to talk about your passion, okay? What is it that you are really passionate about? Now so many of you email me about being in jobs you don't like or you're doing things for money that you're not interested in and you're just not happy. Now I want to share a little bit of my personal story and a way that I kind of moved out of that situation because I had many, many jobs that I didn't like and really I didn't ever really want a job. I was never a very satisfied employee because I always wanted to do my own thing and there was a time where there was a job I was working and I was always pretty exhausted when I would come home and I remember thinking well how can I find the time to look for another job I didn't want to look for another job I wanted to do something satisfying something meaningful and I didn't really want a career in anything in particular I just really enjoyed reading Neville talking about Neville to my friend learning about law of attraction and all of these things and I remember thinking well who's ever going to pay me for that so what I started to do was even though I was working five days a week I made some time every Sunday night for about 15-20 minutes and I would sit down and I would say to myself okay you're going to write down three things that's going to move you in a direction that you want to go in okay and I called it post it Mondays so for the Monday I would start to work through these three things and I would work through those three things throughout the week they might have been little things they might have been a bigger thing but I made sure I did those three things every single week so the turtle won the race I did a little bit each week a little bit each week a little bit each week it might have been to research something I was interested in. It might have been to talk to somebody that was doing what I thought I might like to do. And for me, it was always creative things. Having worked for Walt Disney painting the cartoons, having done a, I had a French dance show called France Dance that toured schools. I also started a ceramic business where I was making ceramics with a logo that I had designed and I was selling that in Australia. And then I started selling ceramics to other shops. Now all of these things, oh and then I went on to do creative homewares displays, styling homewares stores in the big shopping centers across Sydney. Now of all of those things, oh and then I had a business too called Frog's Legs French for Children where I was teaching French across kindergartens and little, just little tiny schools where the kids were small you know two to five and then I went on to teach dancing as well I was teaching dance for a long time so I had lots of creative jobs where I did okay but I was always in debt and never really catching up and never kind of I had enough to maybe live sometimes I didn't but it was I can see now when I look back all of those things allowed me to slowly let go of negative beliefs like creative people don't make money like you have to work hard for money like money it takes a lot of effort for money to come to me um, I never have enough you know all these beliefs that I had around money and around being a creative person trying to be financially stable financially able to support myself and then not just survive but then thrive it was a journey with each and every one of those things oh and I also had a business I forgot about this one where I was importing products from Australia from France to Australia and it was bath and body products and I was you know it was soaps and sprays for the body and all this stuff but then what happened was the euro went up and the Australian dollar went down and then I could no longer purchase the products and it just really wiped out the business because then I had to pay for shipping and then the shipping was expensive so it just made the products too expensive so that completely died. So I did a lot of things is what I want to say to you. I did a lot of things that didn't really work that well because the vibration of me or the energy of me was still 
I didn't feel secure creatively as a person to be able to put whatever it was forward, whether it was a product or service, and for it to be successful. So then I went into learning about law of attraction, about beliefs, about Neville's teachings, which I'd been reading and learning for quite some time through the course of all these creative jobs. But I was still having to learn to shed a lot of things for something to work. Then I did the coaching course, which was for my personal growth, as well as to see if I could do that as a business. And I finally understood that you have to be in a place of giving. And then that external stuff around money, around things coming to you, around things working, around being successful, it starts to flourish. But I had to do that internal groundwork first for the business to then reflect what it was that I really wanted was for it to be thriving and working and that you know it was just something that people would value but the thing was I had to value what I was doing first and I had to be learning and I learned this from Wallace Waddles the science of getting rich learning how to do things in a certain way for those of you that want to learn about that Wallace Waddles audio book is on YouTube and you can listen to that and it was incredibly helpful he talks about that there's no competition and that it's basically you changing how you do things and you do them in a certain way and he teaches you how to do that and it is a fabulous book and it has greatly 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 influenced how I do things so the there is a big difference between your calling as Oprah would call it, and I will put a video down below where she talks about the difference between a career and a calling and just you having a job. And it is, I think, one of the greatest lessons in life that you discover what your calling is or what your meaningful work is. Why am I here? Because a lot of people don't know why they're here. And it took me years. I mean, I was in my 40s. Yes, I did some good things and some fun things along the way, but I still felt like a teenager that wasn't really grown up and I was creating all these amazing things but not making any money. So, or making just barely enough to get by and then having to work when I was sick because I couldn't afford to take days off because when I didn't work, I didn't get paid. So this whole process of finally merging the creative stuff that I love to do. Anything that's creative has always been of great interest to me. And really working with color and design and, you know, relaying information for me is a creative thing, making it fun, relaying it in simple ways, which is what I do on the YouTubes now. And also making sure that you give a certain amount away for free and also that you provide mid-range things price-wise and high-end things so that everybody can have access. I think it's very important to be able to be accessible to everybody. So and in saying that I want to say how important it is to create your own ideas. Don't be piggybacking off what others are creating. Be a pioneer. Create, be on the crest of the wave. Don't be following along and trying to piggyback on other people's ideas because I do see that you know that people do go I don't have my own ideas so I'll take this person's idea and that's that's not I think spiritually correct I mean you can go into the same industry and create the way you do things in your own way because there's industries and industries have a certain amount of ways that they do that within an industry but then you can make it unique to you so have a think about that when you're creating something or when you want to create something and using that three things a week and what I did was within those three things I'd say okay I'm going to do two hours a week towards something that I really want to do and in the beginning it was just researching different things because I didn't really know what I wanted to do so it was researching different creative things learning and starting to reduce it down and finding out about people that were doing creatively wonderful things and me thinking, how could I create something for me that would be of benefit to other people? And it would break me right away from nine to five because I was never a nine to five person and, and I'm still not. 
So it is very much a learning process of listening to your heart, being inspired. You might see somebody doing something and go, wow, I'd love to do that. And then you go and find out, you know, you research on the internet or whatever and research and have a look and see what the tasks are. What does that person actually do during the day? What is that something I'd like to do? So, and the great thing is we've got the internet now and you can put heaps of time and effort researching before you actually pick up the actual thing that you want to move into. So, Yeah, there was a lot of aspects in my own personal life that really helped me to decide, which was I realized I didn't want to work nine to five. I didn't want to work in an office. I didn't want to work in the same place every day. I get very bored being in one room with the same people every day. That's just me. I like to be either totally working in my own space or working with people you know, like I do on on Skype or on Zoom and connecting with people and and really nutting things out. And that to me, the mechanics of things is really interesting. And that's why using Neville and Law of Attraction and all these other things has always really appealed to me because it's worked very well in my own life. So being able to use it to extend it to work out the mechanics with other people has been a really interesting process for me. So I'm going to put another YouTube down below for those of you that have missed it. The 63-year-old model, amazingly free, amazingly in her own passion. I think that's a really incredible video. It's very short, but it is a powerful video. And of course, hearing Oprah share her story in different ways about her own career changes and how things evolved for her, another really good one to listen to. I'll put both of those down below for you. Lots of love. And yeah, put down in the comments where you're at with this because I'd like to do more of YouTubes in line with this and see if we can explore, you know, moving into your calling or more meaningful work rather than being stuck in a job just for money. It's okay, I think, to have a job if you are a person that likes having a job. Nothing wrong with that. That is something that some people prefer and we all go around the circle in a different way. Uh, And it's, you know, we need to pay the bills and we need to have a roof over our head and food on the table. So to have a job in the beginning or even to continue moving from one good job to another and then moving into a career if that's what you want, it's identifying that that's what I want and that's the place you can start. So two hours a week, that's all it took me while I was working and I was tired and didn't have a lot of time. I would allocate one hour on a Saturday and one hour on a Sunday if I happened to have those days off. I didn't always have those days off. One hour on one day and one hour on another day off. And that was it. And you know, the rest is history. This YouTube channel has been a byproduct of putting those three things into practice over those two hours every week. Lots of love, everyone. And I hope that helps you a little bit.